Welcome to Early Morning Catechism. It's been several weeks since we've been on. I was on vacation and then we had some technical problems, but now we have returned. It is now the beginning of the month of August, and in our parish, during the summer months, we run a dynamic high school summer school program. What I would like to do in these next three sessions is to share with you one of the courses that we teach during the summer. It's an elective course that we offer to our students and it's called Exploring Religious Life. One of the perks of the course is that the students get to come to my home and to have a cookout, to pray the Liturgy of the Hours, and to have a discussion of religious life. We also invite our pastor or our deacon to come and join the group. So we've had that already, and it was really a wonderful evening. Well, what is religious life? When I asked the students, they said, well, it's like living a good, strong, spiritual life. Well, yes, but no. The religious life is one of the states of life in the church. Let's look at the four states of life. First of all, there is the single state of life. The advantage to that is a person does not get married, but is free then to move around, uh, to have the means to be very generous to the needs of the church. There is the married state, in which a husband and wife witness to the love between Christ and his church. There is the ordained life in which a man is ordained, receives the sacrament of holy orders to become a deacon and or a priest. And then there is the religious life. It is sometimes called the consecrated life, and it is a state of life in which a man or woman enters a community of men or women and consecrates his or her entire life to God through three vows, poverty, celibacy, and obedience. So, a religious community is made up of men or women who have all consecrated their lives totally to God and to the life of the church. There are many kinds of religious communities. Um, and I'm going to put the three general categories. There is the contemplative way of life which means that basically the group of men or women spend their entire day in prayer and in silence, except for probably a time of recreation in the evening. They do manual work to support themselves, and they go to the chapel seven times a day, including midnight, I believe, to praise God through the Liturgy of the Hours. Then there are apostolic communities. They were founded to do a specific kind of work, such as caring for the sick, or working in hospitals, or teaching in high school. Those religious orders are basically focused on what they do, their ministry. And then there are the evangelical communities. And that word makes us think of the word gospel. They were founded to pray and to do ministry, to do work, but maybe of a variety of sorts. The evangelical communities have as their main purpose to witness to the living of the gospel. That's my religious community, the Sisters of St. Francis of the Holy Cross. 
I'd just like to close by pointing out I have this magazine which I share with the students. I have many copies of it. It's called Vision and it is full of, full of pictures and articles about different religious communities throughout the country. The students were very surprised and I'm sure you would be too if you would page through a book like this and see how many, how many religious communities are here in the United States.